the way you're practicing might actually be holding you back. If you've been feeling frustrated with guitar, like you're not making progress, like you're kind of stuck in one spot, I bet you the one thing that you haven't thought about is your posture and how you actually hold the guitar. Today I'm going to show you how the way you sit could be negatively influencing your technique. And if you stick around to the end, I'm going to show you some tips that the best players in the world use to avoid this and how they positively influence their posture and what sitting positions they use to get the most out of their technique and the practice time. So how could the way you sit or your posture affect your playing? I mean, it doesn't change how your fingers or hands move, right? Wrong. If you're sitting in a position that promotes tension and decreases relaxation, you better believe that's gonna show up in your playing. And if you have stiffness or soreness or you tend to cramp, all these types of things, that can be directly attributed to the way you hold the guitar and the way you sit and your posture. So if you address the root cause instead of chasing all these little symptoms with your practice time, you'll be able to maximize the amount of progress you make in a really short amount of time just by changing something simple like the way you sit or the way you hold the guitar. Now to be clear, not every player is gonna have the exact same issues. Everyone is a little different in their playing, in their technique, in the style that they play, but we are all humans, we all share the same type of physiology, and I think every guitarist should at least know and be aware of the pros and cons of how their posture directly affects their technique and what they could do on the instrument. After all, more knowledge isn't gonna hurt you, but it might just give you the tools to actually get past that hurdle that you're currently stuck at. So most guitarists tend to sit kind of like the way I'm sitting right now. Both feet flat on the ground, guitar on my right leg, and the neck parallel to the floor. But there's some big issues with this. And to start, in order to play like this, the very first thing I need to do is I need to kind of bend forward and to my left. So what happens is you actually bend to your left, your shoulders end up tilting, and your spine ends up tilting. Now if you remove the guitar and you just sit in a chair, your shoulders are pretty much gonna be square and your spine is gonna be straight. But add the guitar in this position and now all of a sudden you're doing this thing. And that bend in the spine and that angled shoulder approach, this, that doesn't come cost free. That requires actually quite a bit of muscle energy to maintain. And if you're trying to play efficiently, relaxed, comfortably, and maybe for a long period of time, then you wanna play relaxed and efficiently. You don't wanna use a bunch of extra muscle energy just to hold your body in a position that you could avoid by tweaking one tiny little thing. So by sitting like this, with your shoulders at an angle, your right hand shoulder sits way above your left, right? which means your scapula and your shoulder blade and everything is pulled up towards the ceiling while all of this is dropped down. What that's gonna do is that's gonna apply a lot of tension to your upper arm, which will change how your arm sits on the guitar and which will actually influence your picking behavior. So I want you to try something right now. I want you to get yourself either in front of a mirror or even better, film yourself. If you sit like this when you play guitar, go ahead and sit like this, and I want you to play the hardest thing that you know how to play. The thing that's like pretty much at like out of your reach, the thing that's too difficult for you to play. I want you to do that and I want you to film yourself. And then I want you to watch it back. There's a good chance that you, if you are sitting like this and you do have this shoulder tilt, that as you get deeper into that really difficult piece of music, your right hand shoulder is going to be moving up and up and up closer to your ear. The reason for that is that the shoulder in this position holds the most amount of tension in your upper body. And as you get really into a piece and you're kind of like pushing yourself, you're tensing and you're tensing more and more and more. Your shoulder's already starting from a point of tension. So if you add and compound tension on top of that, it's going to start rising and start rising. And what you're gonna notice is that the angle of your pick or the angle of your fingers, if you're a finger picker, is gonna change as your shoulder rises. And it doesn't seem like it's changing a lot, but believe me, one, two, three, four degree change in the angle of your picking will make a humongous difference in the cleanliness and accuracy of how you play. Now the second problem that comes from sitting this way with the neck parallel is directly related to your shoulders, but it happens somewhere completely different. It happens in your left hand, in your fretting hand. When you sit like this with the neck parallel, you have to bend, kink at the spine, bend your shoulders, and reach underneath the neck, especially to get the lower strings or to make bar chords. Now, the main issue with reaching underneath the neck is that it does something completely unnatural to your left hand. If you sit there and you just hold your hand out in a natural position, just like go completely limp and hold your left hand out, maybe like you're asking for change. 
this is what my hand naturally looks like, what my wrist naturally looks like, what my fingers naturally look like. Okay, it's a fairly straight wrist that I have going here. And my fingers are curved, everything is loose and relaxed. But as soon as I start to play with this reached under position and bent spine, now I'm doing this. I'll take my hand off and show you. I'm actually playing with a super bent wrist. You can see that. And I guarantee if you do this at home, take a look at how you play. If you sit this way, you're gonna be playing with a bent wrist like this. Now compare this wrist to my natural loose, kind of just like neutral position. This is very natural and it's really relaxed. This requires a ton of muscle energy and does something really, really bad to my fingers. The, thing, the things that actually control how your fingers bend are the tendons in your forearm, on the underside of your forearm and the outer side of your forearm. The inside ones, they pull down and your fingers contract. The outside ones, these tendons pull up, or I'm sorry, they pull down and your fingers go up and they extend. So what happens when you bend your wrist, when you do this thing, or that, the tendons on the outside stretch and they're actually pulling on your fingers and forcing them to extend. And to show this to you, I want you to hold your hand up like this and bend your wrist all the way down as hard as you can. Now try to make a tight fist. Like there's no way, not unless you straighten your wrist again. And the reason is because these tendons are pulling your fingers and forcing them straight. So what does any of that mean? Basically, what that means is when you have to reach under and reach under the neck and bend that wrist, it forces your fingers to be straighter and less curved. And anybody who's played guitar long enough knows that you wanna hit the fingertips or at least close to the fingertips. And if your fingers aren't curved, it's really difficult to hit the fingertips. If your fingers are like long, you're gonna be landing on the pads of your fingers, which is way less accurate. It produces worse tone. And there's a lot of bad things that kind of come with playing with straight fingers. So if you find yourself in a position where it's like really hard to maybe use your pinky or do nice crisp clean hammer-ons, pull-offs, legato, a bunch of different techniques, and it, you find it really difficult to use the fingertips of your hand, this is probably why. You're probably playing with this bent wrist that forces your fingers to elongate. And the more you try and the more energy you put into fighting against that physiological reality, the more you're gonna lose. So instead of trying to fight your physiology, you wanna try to use your physiology to your advantage. So if I get rid of the guitar and I hold my hand out like this and hold my hand or with my palm towards the ceiling, what does my hand naturally look like? What is the natural neutral position of my hand without the guitar? And then how do I apply that to guitar? Because if this equals no energy and total relaxation, then I wanna to try to get as close to this as possible when I'm playing guitar, because I wanna play relaxed with as little energy as possible. And the same is true for my shoulders. If this requires a ton of energy and tension in my shoulder, but if I get rid of the guitar and my shoulders are square and my spine is straight and I have no tension, then why wouldn't I try to play that way? So what does everybody do to solve this problem? That's real simple. You raise the neck up, or the whole guitar, right? You guys might know Tom Morello from Rage Against the Machine. He always gets made fun of because his guitar is like up here, right? Well, he's actually like kind of ergonomically correct. And this is why. When you raise the guitar up, now I don't have to reach underneath and bend my wrist. I can just simply grab the guitar and I've got a straight wrist now. I don't need to do this for any reason. I could play bar chords, I could play the low strings, I could do all kinds of things I need with a straight wrist. And take a look at my shoulders. My shoulders are straight, I'll kind of get my hair out of the way, but you can see my shoulders are straight. I'm no longer needing to do this because that doesn't serve any purpose if I raise the neck up. So if you take a look at some of the pros, take a look at how they're positioned with their guitar, where their neck is in relation to their upper body, and take a look at their shoulders. Now, addressing this raising of the neck, you could do this in a bunch of different ways, but it starts with your chair. What are you sitting on? Essentially, the higher the chair you have, the lower the guitar is gonna sit. Like if you're sitting on a bar stool, the guitar is gonna sit really low because your legs, the your thigh, instead of being 
horizontal is going to be kind of angled down and that's going to promote the guitar sliding downward away from you and creating more of this parallel neck. Whereas if you sit in a lower chair, it actually forces the guitar higher up on your chest. But simply changing the chair that you sit on isn't like the only thing that you can do. There's a bunch of other things. A lot of players, even when they're sitting down, they play with a strap so they can raise the guitar up so that their left hand can come at a straight angle, whatever that angle might be. But if it's too low, the lower you go, the more you have to do that. Additionally, you can sit cross-legged. You can cross your legs and kind of let the body droop back down, which raises the neck up and allows you to play with a straighter wrist. You could play with a footstool where you raise your foot up or you could do it with your left foot, sit maybe more classical style this way. Um, a lot of electric players, if you look at a lot of great jazz players, they sat like this to raise the neck up so that they could play with a straight wrist and straight shoulders. But Companies also make a ton of things to solve this as well. They make those le leg pillows that the bout of your guitar can sit on so that it raises up. They make little suction cup devices that go on the bottom here so that your guitar can sit a little higher. I don't necessarily care which way you choose, but finding some way to raise that guitar up higher to your chest, get the neck elevated somehow. And even if you get the neck a little raised up, even a lot raised up, you're not always gonna have perfect 100% flawless posture, you're not gonna have completely 90 degree square shoulders or a perfectly straight wrist. Guitar is organic and you're gonna be moving and you're gonna be doing things. But generally speaking, overall, better ergonomics equals better technique. So if you can keep your shoulders square, if you can stay in as close to a natural position as possible, as often as possible, your technique is gonna be more relaxed and more efficient. And I have to say, performing is very different. So if you're gonna say, oh, hey, I saw my favorite guitar player on stage and he wears his guitar down like this or he does this or whatever, performing on stage is way different. You have to look kind of cool, you gotta move, you gotta do stuff, your shoulder's gonna be all over the place, your hand is gonna be moving. But in the practice room, you wanna ingrain positive habits and get as few obstacles in your way as possible. Get rid of all the things that are hindering your technique when you're practicing so that you can build in a solid foundation. So overall, the strategy is raise the neck up. Make sure that your shoulders are pretty much square and level, your spine is straight, and your wrist is straight and neutral. Try to stay as close to a natural relaxed position as you can possibly find as often as you can. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that subscribe button, like, share, and ding that notification bell. And thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.